Hello, today we're going to be looking at SRPG Studio again, and how to add player choice and variability to your project. I was asked about this in the comments, and I have to admit it's been very exciting finding out how it all works, so I'm very grateful. I find it very satisfying working on these sorts of things. Before we get into the details though, I should clarify something about how SRPG Studio displays your maps, chapters, or missions. The order of this panel can be arranged however you like, but it is purely for display purposes, and does not in any way affect the order in which levels are played. Instead, the order is determined by events, so branching paths and stories are very easy to include and control. This option in the events menu allows you to direct the player into a different map, and this is where most of what we're looking at today takes place. As it can be determined by items in the database, there are a lot of options for how you would like to control progression between missions. I've come up with a few examples that I can think of good use cases for, but these aren't the limit by any means. First, let's look at good and bad endings. In this case, your mission flow would look a bit like this, with the last level determined by whether or not a key character survived the previous battle. We'll use Krim in this example, and attach the chapter event to this check. If he dies, the current level will end, and the player will be moved to bad end. If the player completes the level and this criteria has not been met, then they will carry on to good end instead. Next, we can expand this idea further to create a collection of missions which we'll refer to as, true root. Here, we would include this event at the end of every map, before the chapter event step. This checks if the player has in their inventory all three of these items, and if they do, then they will be moved to the chapter true 01 and the story will progress from there. Because this is checked at the end of every mission, the player's experience of the game could be anywhere from 5 to 8 missions, depending on when, or if, they obtain all three items. Currently though, these examples are based on factors determined by the player's actions, but not by the player's choices. If you would like the next mission to be actively chosen by the player, then we need to go in a bit deeper. For this setup, we will let the player choose which mission they would like, and then follow a path a bit like this. The way I've set it up, the player's choice is made in here once the victory criteria to end the level have been met. Here is how this would look to the player. By using switches and variables, you can also add a bit more control to the other examples too. When checking if Krim is alive, you can have the event set the variable rather than calling the chapter event immediately. This means the player will continue the mission they are currently on, and won't find out the result of their actions until it's finished. Even without using variables though, you can chain criteria together if you want something to be particularly hard to achieve. For example, here the player is presented with a choice of missions, but the third option is only available to them if Krim is alive and all three key items are in the convoy. I guess we can call that the true good end in this case. Ha ha ha. So that's what I've discovered with this so far. I hope that helps clear some things up, and maybe gives you some ideas too. I think there's a lot of potential with how to use this, so I would love to see what you come up with too. And of course, if you have any questions, please just let me know. This has been a lot of fun. Anyway, that's all from me for today. Catch you next time.